I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Happy birthday! Oh, thank you. I was wondering. I was wondering if when you were going to do it, and I had the feeling it was going to be on the podcast. I, I was waiting. I was waiting until we were on on record in order to c- congratulate you. You made it another year. Um, uh, yeah. Now I'm I'm in another decade. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I guess I guess our hopes for thirty under thirty for a member of this podcast are officially dashed. We can do the forty under forty. That is possible, or the forty two billion under forty two billion. Or four point two billion under four point two billion. Is that a thing? I mean, I just made it. Okay. Technically, like everyone is, except Carl. He There's knows what he did. Fucking Carl. He knows what he did. Carl knows exactly what he did. That's and then Lenny's sly. just way too old for the list. Yeah. There's way seeing that it's it's your birthday. I figured I'd I'd leverage our uh, relationship to ask you a question that um oh, I no. don't know the answer to. And my sister doesn't know the answer to, and I made up an answer um, that oh, sounded God. real enough where someone might believe me, even though I was making it up. And that well, is that's that's your what, mo. What 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 what's what's an NFT? Uh, a non fungible no. trade unit or something. Uh, non fungible. Uh, it's a non fungible transaction or trade, or whatever. But what token. is it? Token. Token. What is it? Uh. Basically, so what I what I told her, which so, I was inventing, was that it's most likely a digital only item, and that item has some kind of key or code with it that means it's re- legitimate and real and and one of kind, and authenticates it, saying that it is a thing. Um, so that's close. It, and and then I don't know if you can trade them. Are they soul bound? I told her they might be soul bound. They they might be soul bound. Um, they're not soul bound, but what they are is they're a part of the blockchain. So they have a block. So basically, the way that NFTs work, it's cryptocurrency, is, but you buy it from Kevin James. Yes, and it's non fungible, meaning it's not. It doesn't have intrinsic value to it. Yeah, right. Um, the key with crypto with that is, and actually, wait, let me make sure I'm using this word right. Um, so the idea is whoever owns it, the person who owns it, um, is is able to trade, like send it to someone else, and the blockchain will authenticate who owns that piece of property. Okay, <clears throat> basically. So um, if so, even though you have a, an NFT in this case, a token, for example, uh, Paul Blart three digital. Kevin James is still the owner as far as the blockchain no. is concerned. You are the owner. No, you are the owner. If, if you get the NF access, to, if you own the NFT, you are the then owner. It's yours. And okay. you have a, you have a, a piece of a ledger, which is blockchain. The blockchain is effectively yeah. a ledger. It's a, bu- it's a singly linked list that thing. tracks all of who owns all of it. Right. So like gotcha. in, uh, so, so how are these different than so my the, the, part two of the question also I feel like something very important to say right now because we did say blockchain a number of times this is not a cryptocurrency podcast we uh, might say blockchain and we're probably gonna bring up Doge at some point. This is not a cryptocurrency podcast. So the, the other question is. Is it similar to uh, cryptos where there's a finite item or finite uh, number of them? Or is it uh, any number of them can be created and sold? That I'm not as sure of. Not I'm like not 100% on that. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to think about it. Yeah, I, I came very close. I might even later today um boot my laptop to find my wallet 
<laughs> see what I actually have. So Dogecoin had a weird day yesterday. Dogecoin um, had an Elon Musk tweet, which is why it had a weird day. I, uh, but that being said, Brandon, it's like considerably hot. Its baseline now is considerably higher than it was. Oh, like it's doubled. It's yeah. almost tripled because it's right now sitting at th- twenty-eight cents. Yeah, and it hit forty cents. So for a brief glorious moment, I have ten. I had ten thousand dollars in Doge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I was and like, I, man, if we if we get one more like meme tweet, like I I might. I think I might have to set up my wallet so I'll be able to sell those off. So it's complicated. It's. Com- I figured it would be complicated cause I because I figured you can't just do that. Because what ended up happening was New York State passed a law that uh, caused most of the exchanges not to work in New York State. Oh. Um, but there are ways around it. Okay. But I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna publicly incriminate myself on a podcast. Okay, there there is another op- now. I don't know if these sites are still up. Um, when Doge was new and still a meme, instead of somehow becoming real life, um, it was. It, yep, yep. There, there, there were websites that recognized that it's a thing people are doing because it's fun, but there's no real inherent value to it, um, cash wise. But they did make it so you could purchase things online with Doge. Assuming you could use Bitcoin to buy stuff, there are websites yeah. that accept Doge as payment. So you, I could potentially spend my Doge on those and then sell that stuff on eBay. You could. You could. Um, Bots Inc. now accept Dogecoins as form of payment. Easy DNS starts to accept Dogecoin. Dogecoin for beers. Bay Area restaurants start accepting cryptocurrency. Yeah, so it's it's somehow this meme stock is is being, uh, it's not a stock. That it, it's becoming a thing that you can spend directly for for uh, items in a transaction instead of something you have to like transfer over into a bigger, more popular crypto or or trade for cash. The Dallas Mavericks are accepting Dogecoin. So, Brandon, we're getting dangerously close into this is a cryptocurrency podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. Because like you asked, you asked about NFTs. I'm talking about Doge and like how it's the long con and like I hope that it, if it ever hits five dollars, I own my house. You know, there's I want. I'm, I think I'm going to sit on it till it hits a, a dollar. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Because I, I don't think that's that's outside it, the realm of, of reality. So, theoretically, um, if you look at the market cap for Dogecoin and the market cap for Bitcoin, theoretically, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but theoretically, the market capitalization for Dogecoin is um, has the ability to grow up until... Like, I think, uh, if my math was right, five... About four, like I think I was either thirty-three or forty times from where it is right now. Oh, shoot! Somewhere in that right. range, um, which means that theoretically, eight dollar Doge is possible. Unlikely, pro- possible, but it's not unlikely. Probable. It is possible. It is physically possible, but it's unlikely. Is what I'm saying. That's right. Um, and with that being said. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Not a cryptocurrency podcast. Each it week really we'll take it. you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world. Not cryptocurrency. Tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John Cryptocurrency Dunham. Oh! There's... I'll, I'll verify your blockchain. Um... I don't. I feel sad. I feel you, sad now. You should. You should. There's. Let me. I'm gonna mine you. Oh. Oh, that feels wrong. I'm. I'm gonna mine you. Oh, also are you, are you... something I did read is that um, the the um, the the the, the consumption of electricity on machines, uh, mining cryptocurrency, has far exceeded the work we've done to combat global warming. Yeah, it's like a nuclear power plant. It's worth the yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's super not good. 
And I should have thought ahead because I only mined Doge when I was still living with my parents' house. And I was, like, overclocking my, my laptop, knowing that they were the ones paying for the electricity when I was just leaving the house and letting that thing fucking run. And I knew what I was doing before I even got the laptop, because it was for games, because I made sure it was all metal. I intentionally bought a laptop that couldn't melt because I knew I'd be doing terrible things to it. Oh, Brandon, that poor laptop. <laughs> the porn that laptop must have seen. The porn... Uh, I got a, not literally the Wish version, but I got like a Wish version of um, a VR headset. Um, but my, th this was a few years ago, so maybe if I dig it up, I, I could f get it. It's the kind where like you slide your phone into it and it's yeah, VR. Yeah, yeah. Like a Google because, Cardboard style thing. Yeah, because I heard fantastic things about um, VR porn, but at the time... Uh, for the Google Cardboard style of, of headset, there wasn't, yeah. and it, there was nothing great in it, the quality was, and it was a large disappointment. It was like, I, I, I bought like, it was like a $25 jerk off headset that I got, and it greatly let me down. I was severely disappointed. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. That being said, could I borrow your Oculus? No. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, this week you don't get cum on it. You're gonna touch it with cummy hands. <laughs> oh, the cummiest! No, I'll the wear cummiest. nitrile gloves. Uh, this Ooh, week I'll... that sounds awful. What nitrile gloves? No, wearing like. <laughs> Are you <sighs> dry? Dry with gloves. Uh, you like a dry? <laughs> How, How much dry teeth do you, do you like? No, no teeth, no teeth. Yeah, my mouth is like a desert. And now she's Kimmy Schmidt. Yep. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the the Derek comedy cast has really gone surprisingly far from when watching their videos in, like, the computer lab and just them being massively inappropriate in school, which was very funny, to now being, like, all of them are very successful. I don't know all I, of their names, but there's Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, Everyone knows who Donald Glover is, Charles Gambino, and any of the Star Wars and all that stuff. And then the other people, even though I don't remember their names, they're also all on network television playing, like, like just regular roles on shit. It's great. Everyone go watch Derek Comedy. It's fantastic. Um, especially watch the Spelling Bee one. The Spelling Bee? I heard what you said. Uh, I heard what you said. We were just referencing their skit, I think, called Blowjob Girl. Yeah, it's Blowjob uh, Girl. I uh, just recently watched it. I uh, I showed Christina it. Oh, nice. Did you show yeah. her the um, the self-defense class one? Not yet. I haven't shown her that That's one yet. That's so good. That one's really funny. Uh, we're talking... So this is this is Audie's... This is Audie, Aughts references, like late Aughts references, folks. So if you're not... If you weren't around in the late Aughts, sorry... If 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 new if e bombs world wasn't like a bang in sight for, for you at some point in time, then you don't know what we're talking about. If e bombs world was not a site that you recognize the name of, you're probably not listening to this podcast. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Um, like. Yeah. E -bomb, yeah. Newgrounds e bombs world. Those that, that was that was the day. Ed Bassmaster. They were. Uh, all good things. This this week I'm gonna forego the guessing game because I, I I'm doing multiple um, creatures and I think I might start trying to uh, go because I've got a list of creatures that I couldn't get a full episode out of. I might start trying to go th go through that list just to uh, start clearing it out. Mm -hmm. So we're we're gonna start off talking about uh, Mantis Man and let me peel Why back. Do I feel this like I've heard this name. Maybe a lot of the like animal men are just weird uh, things. I want to share. Oh, I this to... it's something wiki. Move to here. Move. Boom. There we go. Strange men. All right. So yes. these are going to be the lesser known creatures with fewer sources, who are all named something dash man, um, listed in no particular order. To start. Okay. Mantis Man, the oldest depiction of Mantis Man, or what people are claiming is the oldest depiction of Mantis Man, 
is between four and 40,000 years old. And that's 4,000, not actually four years old. Uh, and is a petroglyph found oh, okay. in Iran. Um, the wide date range is because Iran is not allowed to have radiocarbon. So what? they 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 can't do... Um, <laughs> it's part of like... The, we won't let them have things that you could turn into things that go boom, even though we like making things that go boom. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. So, so, so they, yeah, Iran's not allowed. But to why have not like? Why not like take a sample and ship it out? Um, I, I don't know, but that might also be part of like preservation. They might not want to actually damage. Yeah, but if you do radiocarboning, don't you have to like take a little sample, like a tiny sample? You know sample? that's true. You, true, yeah. Because you have to get, you have to observe the decay rate. So, like, and usually you need to do that in a lab, I think. Yeah, I think you also need five micrograms. I think is what you need, and I'm only throwing that number out because I was writing another episode last night, and uh, someone needed to take a sample of a thing. Got it. Um, so the glyph was found in 2017 by a surveyor in Sarkobil village located west of center of Iran and to me looks like a cool missing though uh but other people say it's a praying mantis I don't see a praying mantis at all let me just say like that's a really abstract praying mantis if it's a praying mantis it's the the there's only one part of the torso that I would consider praying mantisy yeah it's, that's it's a it. little it looks kind of like a a Swiss Army spatula, to me. Are 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 praying mantises even in Iran? I don't know. Maybe I wrote about it. Uh, maybe I didn't. Uh, yes, they did. Okay. Uh, a group yeah. of entomologists and archaeologists got together to identify the motif, uh, because petroglyphs of invertebrates are very rare. They found uh, a quote triangular head with big eyes and grasping forearms are unmistakably those of a praying mantid. Um, but where are the man parts, you ask yourself? Is it just a regular praying mantis and not a mantis man? The man portion of the mantis man comes from the circles around the mantis's limbs. According to a paper published in the Journal of Orthopetra Research, uh, the design on the rock resembles a well-known squatter man motif found all over the world. Um, This is new to me. Also new to me, but I'm not into like orthopetra I'm, i don't i don't know go into petroglyphs too much um oh i see what you're i see what it is that's a it's actually a very familiar thing okay it's uh, like <laughs> it's like a guy standing like zoidberg oh and he's got two dots yeah yeah okay all right as soon as he said um, that i was like i know exactly what you're talking about yeah the uh so that reminds me i recently watched xavier renegade angel again <laughs> Oh, was it amazing? Yeah, the Squatters Rights episode's really good where they go to Burning Man or Burning Burning Person, I think it was. I I feel like the views of that show are going to skyrocket once uh marijuana becomes legal and accessible through through shops in New York state <laughs> or in any I mean, state. It is currently legal, but in New York state it's just not available. It's legal to 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 have, but it is illegal to uh, sell or buy. So you you can basically like if it's found on your person, you won't get in trouble. But do not say that you sold or bought it. It's just from the weed fairy. If you just happen to have it on you from the weed fairy, that is what's legal now in New York. Isn't that how you get weed? I don't know. I've never really smoked weed, so like I always assumed it was just a fairy. The weed fairy is uh, Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force wearing fairy wings, and he just knocks on your front door. Uh, that, uh, that sounds like the description of a weed fairy I know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's pretty close to a description of a weed uh, fairy I am aware of. Yeah. I th- <laughs> and I think that person who is the weed fairy that I'm aware of would be very excited at the, the prospect of being compared to Carl. Oh, I, th- <laughs> I think um, I know. I think I know the weed fairy. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I would bet money. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's reasonable. It's reasonable to bet money on that weed fairy. Yeah. Uh, from here, we will travel to Hackettstown, New Jersey, 2005. 
uh, in the scene. Uh, God, Jersey. Why you, does Jersey haunt me? Yeah. The, 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 so you you are an anonymous fisherman. and um, I'm John. I'm not you, anonymous. You are John the anonymous fisherman. Um, although but I'm the, John. The, <laughs> John, I don't. You... I don't get this. I don't. I. I. Brandon. I was the DM. I wasn't the role player. Okay. Yeah. Which, I'm, which is, if you've ever played D anD D, you know how fucking stupid that sentence is. <laughs> yeah. You. You probably role played more than anybody. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. And you did the voices. I like. I the did voices. do some of the voices. Some of them were fun. Some of them were fun. Some of them were terrible. Some of I them, avoided racism, though. You I did will av- say. avoid racism. Um, we might have talked about this before. I rarely did the voices, but the moment I did the voices, you f- fucking tricked me, and I got stuck doing the voices. It yeah, hurt my and then throat. You, and we this, definitely talked about it before, and you like would you would periodically f- slip into the voice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So although the water was clear, there had been heavy rain the past couple of days. We should not have been out there. The river was, quote, smooth, but the current was exceptionally strong. I was leaning backwards and digging my heels into the gravel, but the river was still kicking me along pretty good. Uh, Sketchy navigating. And then he continues saying, I just caught it. Movement out the corner of my eye to the left, and there it was. A humanoid, tall, six uh, six feet at least, um, th- th- there's that just no reference points. Um, but is, but wait, if there's no reference points, you can't say how tall it was. Yeah, well, that's why he said I sensed six to seven feet. But he but sensed Brandon, it. There was no reference points around. But he Brandon, sensed it. But Brandon. But Brandon. Yes. But Brandon. Reckoning height literally depends on reference points that's why we're so bad at identifying things in the sky yeah like like literally we we have to observe something in comparison to a thing of known height yes i mean that that's also just how things work in general too yeah like you need you need a known variable in that equation to calculate the unknown variable true unless you're an anonymous fisherman and then you know it was between six and a half to seven feet tall I'm not an anonymous fisherman. I'm not even a fisherman, to be totally honest with you. That true. Uh, moving away, uh, moving away from me, back up the bank. Also, could have just been like five nine, and because it's moving up a bank, it looked taller. That's true. Th- this is starting to sound an awful lot like me. That one time I was in Hackettstown, New Jersey, in 2005, in a green man suit. <laughs> I'm still mad that the guy in the green man suit, when we did went to the boo ball, pe- people liked his costume. And I was like, there's no effort. It's just a green man suit. It was such a lazy costume, but it like won something, I think. No. Uh, I, uh, well, did it? It might have won something. I remember it Lilo placed. Dallas won because yeah, Lilo well, Dallas. Lilo Dallas. Um, disco, disco ball guy won something. Yeah. Um, And then did Master, did Drunk Master Chief win? Something. No, he just he he won his he won his thing getting broken. Yeah. And then there was the other guy who was a ghostbuster who won and I didn't win even though I was a ghostbuster too. Yeah. Cuz his his backpack looked nicer because he made it off a kit off a line and mine was hand built. <laughs> uh <clears throat> So he's well, I he is chest high in the river. Uh, the first thing I see was the, and he's calling it a grasshopper, uh, thigh, uh, bending forward like a human, then the whole form. He was looking at me over his shoulder, moving up the bank, astonished and amazed. Uh, what that I am in the water in a strong current that I can see him. That sentence doesn't make, I don't know. That That sentence doesn't make sense. sense. It's a quote from a guy that his existence itself is dubious because he's an anonymous fisherman. Um, but yes, we lock eyes, and this creature is astonished. So also, so apparently, if he can tell, read his facial expression, and it didn't know he was there. Um, oh, because he said it's astonished. So to me, that means it was also surprised. Does did eighty music eighties music start playing when they locked eyes? Was it like a 
like a uh, when I close my eyes. Is that even eighties? I don't know. I'm thinking of like the. I don't even know what the song is like. Ooh, 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 that one, and it's like dur, dur, that song. Um, I, I I feel like we did a really bad a bad job of presenting both of those songs. Oh yes. Maybe what about I just died in your arms tonight? Maybe that would be a good one. Maybe. Oh no 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 Huey Lewis in the news. Oh. That, was, that would be what it's playing. Uh, that's the power of the. Burr, oh, burr, okay. Burr. That that starts playing when they lock eyes. So they lock eyes. He gets the sense that he can't believe I am in the water, meaning the alien can't believe the humans in the water, and that he can't believe I've seen him. Uh, that I am not perturbed at all. Something all of all three. I still don't know. Just astonishment, and he actually was trying to get away from me in the water. So he spooked Mantis Man. I mean, to be fair, if I saw a human and I was a non-human, I'd probably fucking flee. Yeah. Because we're nightmares. There's, they'd be like, I we, know what you did. We are the literal boogeyman of every other creature on the planet Earth. If you really think about it, we're basically yeah. boogeymen. Yeah, that's true. Um, we are legend. We are legend. Triangular had huge slanted black eyes, just like a praying mantis. Its whole body was gangly and knobby, uh, but you could still sense it was powerful. And though he, this guy does a lot of sensing, by the way. Yeah. He senses height, he senses power. Um, I would not say it was a big bug. It was definitely humanoid, despite the mantis insect qualities. Um, he claims that mantis man was 15 to 20 yards away. Uh, again, no, I don't think he could, t- he could tell how far away Without a it was. Point. Once again, With no reference, no reference points. A reference point would be good because if you don't know what if you don't know what the height of it is in the first place, then it makes it hard for you to guess and approximate. There's a lot here. There's a lot, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so understand that it was several feet above me. I looked up at it and framed clearly against the blank white sky. So that's the again lack of point of reference, like a full ghost apparition. Um, it indeed, it was indeed clear, but nevertheless, uh, nearly transparent and fading fast. Then it evaporated mid stride. So it's also a ghost mantis man. Um, again, I stress the strong impression that the mantis man was cloaked and I caught it just right. It abruptly found itself against a new blank background and was adjusting quickly. No, I do not believe it slipped into another dimension or plane. So, here's the thing. So, he's implying that it had a cloaking device that temporarily failed, allowing him to see it. And that whoever was interviewing him had asked if it was an interdimensional praying mantis. When I close my eyes. <laughs> As the mantis slowly disappears and fades away. Changes from the power of love to another song. All the songs about, like, disappearing and fading away... Uh, Marty McFly shows up and he's like, Doc! Oh! Because <laughs> uh, the mantis is him. Is we, we is mantis. We is uh, mantis. Now, apparently the witness did some of his own Googling because he believes it is a race of ancient mantis leaders. He also did not tell his boss about, the, uh, uh, about it, who he was fishing with several feet away. He claims that as someone who is used to the paranormal and sees shadow people and ghosts or whatever, that you just don't tell people about it. Uh, huh. Yeah, this guy's a lot to unpack. Huh. Um. So first time I've heard of ancient mantis leaders. Me too. So That's I want to point that out. <laughs> I want to point that out. Um. I'm pretty like, not for nothing, like, I think I think the fact that we do this podcast kind of indicates how in touch with like weird shit we are. And that has literally never hit my radar of weird shit. Yeah. So in in 91 episodes, uh, the ancient race of mantis leaders hasn't uh shown up until just now. Jesus fuck. Christ, 91 episodes. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, that's new. That's new. Yep, it's rare we get a new one, and oh boy, when we do, it's great. 
Um, another Manta sighting occurred in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it was investigated by MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, and took place in 2009. A worker had several UFO sightings in the same day involving an orb close to his head uh, and him startling a three-foot-tall tripedal alien looking at a Transformer at the end of his crazy day uh, by his account. He was doing some paperwork in uh, in a control booth, and a man-sized Pragmantis went up to the window beside him and just stared at him for about 60 seconds that left. So are we sure that this isn't just Charlie Day at this point? It might just be Charlie Day. Because, like, we're in Philly. It's 2009. Uh, I think It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is on the air. Yeah, uh, I, I like the idea that Mantis Man himself is a peeping Tom. Where he's just, like, watching. He's just like, ah. Oh. Like, paperwork is its kink because it's an alien. So it doesn't know human things. So, like... Hot. <laughs> just, it gets its... It's Jimmy's going from paperwork. Uh, Let's see. They get rustled. Yeah, he then... Hurts, um, so, yeah. So, uh, I want to point out... Green Man uh, yes. is from the season three episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The gang gets invincible in 2007. Um, <sighs> I it aired September 13th, 2007. So Green Man is in the public consciousness and is in the Philadelphia public. It's in the sphere of Philadelphia in terms of public consciousness. There's Someone could have just been binging It's Always Sunny and then went up and just scare, startle the worker, I guess? You know, they're still making It's Always Sunny? I, uh, Hulu. Yes. Yes, they're still making it. Uh, he then heard screeching sounds coming from the roof. He believes still he was... Not, vis- yeah? Still not dis- it's still not discounting my theory. It's still not discounting your theory? I, I'm, I'm assuming that's just the sound of Mantis Man coming from watching someone do paperwork, because he's a peeping Tom. That he's a pervert. Mantis Man is a pervert. He's a pervert. Okay? He, he believes not, he was... <laughs> not, like, not like a subtle one. He's like a super, like, gross pervert. Oh, yeah. He's, a uh, uh, Yeah, I was thinking of a reference, but then I lost it. Uh, he believes he was visited several times after by the same creatures, but did not see them. Uh, the next MUFON report comes from 2009, same year, but this time in... Uh, Monhans, Texas, a city located uh, to the west side of the state uh, with a population of just over 7,000. So kind of a small uh, city. Yeah, pretty small. It's pretty small. The witnesses uh, was having a party for someone's birthday. During the party, uh, two nephews and a niece came screaming, saying that they just saw a plane crash. Um, Uh... They didn't initially go outside because it was nippy in December and that they only smelled uh, mesquite, which I assume is the baseline smell for all of tix- Texas. Um, mesquite? Yeah, I just assume all of Texas smells like mesquite. Uh, yeah, and that enough. mesquite likely smells different than burning aircraft fuel. Yeah, probably. Um, but eventually asked the kids to show them where the plane went down. Uh they said that the first thing they noticed was that all the dogs in the area were barking like crazy. Uh, they're dogs. That's all I have to say about that. I had dogs. Yeah. When it, it, in the thing, if you have a dog and the neighbor has a dog, when one dog barks, then the other dogs bark. And then all the other dogs bark. So they, and then they, the cats meow. Yeah, so I don't find it absurd or weird that like a bunch of dogs would be barking at the same time. Um, this, to me, seems more like something with a movie. Um, and logs, all dogs don't bark at loud noises. Like they, they, like if anything, like hide under, like try to go under like a table. If there's like a la- la- like startling loud noise. To be um, fair, it depends on the dog. That one, that one depends on the dog. Cause okay. like some dogs, some dogs are spook or, or ba- little baby dogs. And then other dogs are like, I'm going to fucking kill that thing. <laughs> this sky explosion. I'm going to murder the sky explosion. I must kill I'm the gonna- light. I must eat it. <laughs> Give it to me. Uh, as they went through the woods, they noticed an electrical charge in there around them, and light was coming through the trees, more diffuse than a car's headlights, they specified. Um, what they saw was a glowing oval-shaped craft about 40 feet 
uh, around floating five feet off the ground. They witnessed two men exit the craft who began running around and picking things up off the ground. So implying it was an actual crashed spacecraft. Uh, They were about four feet tall, very skinny with large heads and long arms that hung to their knees. Um, It is at this time that the nephew came up behind them all and yelled, What are those things? Uh, or, as I, or if they were, uh, if this was, if this was, because uh, this is the time of uh, Vine. What are those? What are those? Uh, or um, shoot, um, what's that guy with with the funny things on the internet? Um, uh, oh God, it's mm. uh, I'm 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 just making mouth sounds as I try to quickly. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds to, like you're making mouth. I'm trying to think of a joke, but like you're making too many mouth sounds for me to make a good joke. Honestly, it's just it's just not conducive to me thinking about a joke. So I was trying to think of someone who is very sad on the internet, and like yeah, Onyx. I don't have any good sad. O- Onyx o- Onyx from Bowser Vids. Onyx uh, Onyx the Pokemon. No, the is it Crystal we- Onyx. The uh, the weird. So there, there's a guy on YouTube who just made a bunch of weird news interview clips that got very popular, and I'm sure once you see him, you'll be like, "Oh, it's that guy." Um, oh, I don't know this dude. You don't know him? I don't know this dude. This is oh, new to me. Well, this you're is brand new. You're welcome. I guess this is brand brand fucking new to me. You're very if, welcome. He's got a face. He's got a face. He just makes like fake uh, news interview videos where he's just. It's like the interviewers asking a weird guy questions. Uh, then the creatures whipped around to look at them. Uh, the sight of these creatures was something that still haunt me to the day I die. I turned and looked. Uh, they turned and looked right at us. Its eyes were large, almost like the eyes of a praying mantis, except they were jet black and wrapped around its head. The two creatures looked at us for about seven seconds, uh, not an ounce of movement, before they calmly walked back to the craft, one right after the other. They disappeared behind the craft, and we never saw them again. Wait, uh, but what happened to the craft? I no, I don't know. Here's the problem. But what happened to the cat craft? There's, there's a couple questions here. One, they're shorter than the height that the craft is hovering off the ground. So how did they walk behind it? Like they could, they would still be like it wouldn't be obfuscating the line of sight. You would still just see them. Yeah, you'd you'd be like I can it'd be like watching it'd be, like a toddler play hide and seek. You'd be like I can still like, see. Yeah, you. you're there still. I see you. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be like the uh, the from Scary Movie One when uh, the Ghostface Killer parody. Yeah, <laughs> the Ghostface parody is like, do you know where I am? I, I can see you. You're behind the couch. Shit. <laughs> what about now? Uh, behind the behind the uh the 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 the, the, the whatchamacallit, it's the um I'm bad at quotes. We we both be bad at quotes. Um now the very last sighting was brief and from an anonymous person who is watching TV and when they looked out the window, uh they saw a seven foot tall praying mantis dressed in a gray suit who then ran away. Peeping mantis? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want a I want a action figure now that is just a praying mantis in a uh in a, a gray, gray suit. suit. <laughs> yeah. A little he, bit. He's a like, I, man. I little I a little bit I want that in my life. Who is it? Vor- Vorak? From uh who's the guy from Space Ghost Coast to Coast? Uh oh, uh Zorak. Zorak, that's the guy I was trying to think of. Zorak. Um now on to our next strange man, Gator Man. And no, I'm not talking about a guy who wrestles alligators. In 1973, in New Jersey, referent, uh, residents saw the Gator Man for the first time in the Newton Lafayette area. A reporter covered the stories about this man-sized bipedal crocodile. And in 1977, um, a New York City conservation naturalist, Alfred Holstroke, reported that the state's southern tier um, was the apparent home of a so scaled man uh, light creature, which appears at dusk uh, from red algae-infested waters to forge among the fern and moss-covered uplands. Although this is the only, like, air quotes, official comment in regards to the New J- Jersey Gator Man. And I mean, by it's... official, it's because 
people are saying like New York state official recognizes whatever. It's because he happens to work for the state and is yeah. technically an official. They're saying a state official is recognizing this as a thing. Also, he literally could just be reporting on the fact that people are saying this is a thing. If, if by yeah. the way I'm reading, by the way I'm reading what you've written, uh, it could literally be just he has to report on it because people are claiming it's a thing. So it's like apparently people are seeing this. Yeah, um, and like it's a part of his. It might be a part of his job just to report those things. So just like, to say things. Yeah, true. Like um, now the the Alfred Hol- Holstruck. Uh, the, the conservation naturalist is the biggest and most common reference when you're looking this up across all of the sites. Like it's the most quoted thing that you'll find. Um, but now here's the, the problem with New Jersey uh, Gator Man. It's the exact same copy and paste on every site too. It's not just that like it, 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 it's so like I, an associated press article. Yeah. So then I decided uh, let's look for the actual newspaper article, right? Because they're saying he's, he said it in a newspaper. Let's find the real newspaper article. There aren't any, John. There aren't any. I'm not surprised. Which, which is fine. Not everything's available in the format of like a scanned newspaper. It's great when I find those, but you don't always get those. So then I figured, let's find out more about Alfred Holstruck. Uh, surely he had to like, there had to be something else going around about him. Nothing. He doesn't exist. To, to the best I could find, no one named Alfred Holstruck has ever worked for, like, the state of New York conservation anything. Um, so now I believe the uh, the New Jersey Gator Man is just an internet creepypasta. Because I can't find anything. That, there's not even, like, an article about him talking about just regular ferns and birds or whatever. There's nothing. Um, so let's go south for the Florida Gator Man because uh, everything's better in Florida. Uh, Is in the, it? No, but of course they'd have a Gator Man. Yeah, I mean they're just Gators. I mean, aren't all Floridians like just Gators in <laughs> human suits? <laughs> There's all the Florida Gator Men are just people in Florida who saw alligator while they were on bath salts. That's all it is. And they're like, I'm going to put a gator costume on. I think this is a good idea. Also, just a green man suit. Yes. Yes. Uh, In the 1700s, eyewitnesses saw what they described as a six-foot-tall man with scaly uh, bodies and large claws. Uh, And that they were even capable of using tools. Hot. These were more gator on the bottom and human on the top type creatures. Uh, that some even had the ability to reason and give opinions. So this is, How? again, like centaur-ish, but gator bottom human top. How? Um, how? Like, like how did they, did they have, like, the power of speech? They, they had they to have sure the power of speech. Because they, they had sure the as fuck didn't have the power of love. They, they didn't have the power of love. They had the power of speech because they could give opinions, but they did not have the power of reason because they were in Florida. Um, however, you can find newspaper clippings of, uh, one of the Florida alligator men. So that is in the weekly world news. So it's gotta be real. Um, it's gotta be true. His name is Jake and he was bought from an antique shop for 750 bucks in 1967. Not much is known about him, but it is clearly a sideshow gaff like the snake girl and cow man, et cetera. Um, and he is now viewable in March's museum in Washington. Oh, that's like super duper fake like super oh, yeah. duper fake like fiji mermaid level fake yeah it, it's it's dingback level fake yeah well. uh so let's change topics to something that could explain at least some extent uh to cause someone to think they saw an alligator human uh skin conditions i mean i got skin conditions everyone's got skin condi- i got the dry elbow i gotta get some lotion anyway um Lotion Betty it the up. Alli- what? Lotion it up. Lotion it up. So I actually need to buy more lotion. I have so much lotion. And now that everyone's using hand sanitizer, like the one day a week I go to work, everyone just hits me up for lotion because everyone's using hand sanitizer. Um, so all their hands are cracked. All cracked. So Betty the alligator girl. I've got a picture of her. Uh, but in her case, Steve. the symptoms of alligator heritage are not nearly so marked 
as in the accounts that they, they, they quoted below. In Betty's case, um, there's no tail and no love of water or long uh, basking in the sun. Um, she has a skin condition known as ichthyosis uh, and a certain degree of mental deficiency. Um, ichthyosis is a catch-all term for a variety of skin disorders. Something like 20, 23, I think it was, skin disorders when I looked it up. But it'll cause you to be all um, scaly and the such. So that could potentially cause people to, you know, especially in the, the 1700s where... Uh, oh, yeah, it looks definitely like a... It's definitely got a... Oh, oh, no, that's Harlequin fetuses. I hate it. Thanks. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. I accidentally... I accidentally... That's why it sounded familiar to me and why I had to Google it was because of Harlequin fetuses. Yeah, also very popular to look up in the computer lab when E-bombs rolled as popular. Yes, it was. Uh, also, I found out recently that... Uh, individuals who are born with ichthyosis like that can survive i thought it was like a death sentence but i guess not uh yeah i, I never maybe it's more rare i, I just didn't well it's rare to, to, to like adulthood? it's rare to make it to, to make it yeah adulthood okay because i know there are some people that survived until like you would call to like child but they they also didn't necessarily make it yeah um there are a number of examples of this condition, uh, which is uh, things that I all read already. But yep. um, let's see how a Kentucky newspaper might report on uh, something like this. And oh, that's terrible. <laughs> what is? This headline. Oh, yeah. This is awful. Amphibious boys with alligator hides. Queer freak of nature in eastern Kentucky. So I suspect that the, these gator sightings, gator human sightings, are more of newspapers that are awful. Yeah, this this is this is like uh, this is this is like really bad accessibility writing. Yes. Yeah. Basically, um, like at its core, this is just like shitty, like shit awful. I don't know how to write about people who have a different point of view that may or like existence that may oh yeah again the medical summary of 1915 volume 7 page 293 literally called the 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 individual with ichthyosis betty the alligator girl i hate it yeah i hate it everything's awful all the time it. still is um That's marvelous weird. stories reach uh here from Morgan County up in the mountains of eastern Kentucky concerning two wild creatures recently discovered, which surpass all freaks of nature that have heretofore been brought to notice. They are two boys aged apparently about 8 and 12 years old respectively, and they both have the same peculiar construction. Um, while having the, for the form and body of a human possessing all of the activity uh, of the children uh, of men on land, they are covered with scaly hide similar to those worn by an alligator, and take to the water just as naturally as the amphib amphibious animal. Um, uh, are, alligators wait. are not amphibians, by the way. They aren't? Are they not? They're are reptiles. They? They're reptiles. They're, yeah, they're reptiles. Yeah. yeah. So, wait, so... actually... Alligator... <laughs> but before I shit well, no, on this it newspaper... Doesn't, it, doesn't start, it doesn't start as... As an egg. Yeah, like, well, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the cycle. Yeah, it doesn't have... Yeah, so this newspaper, besides being wrong about how they de depict these people, also wrong about alligators being amphibians. To um, be fair, they don't call it amphibian. They call it amphibious. amphibious. Which is different. Because amphibious means it can operate on land and sea. Oh, uh, let's see. I was about to shit on maybe. I, no, I'm still going to shit on the newspaper just for you, different you're reasons. You're allowed to shit on them. They're bad. Yeah, they like, are bad. They're terrible. Uh, they walk, they run and play, and they've even been taught to talk, John. They can talk. They are entirely devoid of hair, and their limbs are always in motion, whether they're asleep or awake. One peculiarity is that they've never been known to sleep with their eyes shut. This, I think, is a load of shit. Because they're just it definitely trying, is. <laughs> trying to make them sound like alligators. But they will leap into the water, warm or cold, with the agility and seeming delight of bullfrogs. Uh, and will catch and handle snakes with perfect delight, uh, the absence of anything of uh, uh, like fear. Um, that, that That's just... Just ter terrible, 
terribleness. Now let's go to some terribleness in Jacksonville, Florida from the Times Union. The Alligator Children. Oh no. I mean it's Jacksonville, Florida, so it's already got it's already got some strikes against it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like uh, let's just be real, it's got some strikes. Uh, perhaps the greatest living curiosities now in existence in this country will pass through this city on their way to Cincinnati and Louisville next Tuesday. About two years ago, Mr. Charles Lewis of the Lewis, Bro- Bro- Lewis Brothers Bloody Knife Company. Um, Wait, Bloody Knife Combination Company? Yeah. What is that? Like, what is a common? Okay, so what is a combination company? My assumption, because I... It, I don't recall having actually looked them up. A combination company, it might be a company made of other disparate oh, companies. It's a touring theater company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which perform one play, only one play. Unlike repertory comedy companies, which form multiple plays in rotation, com- combination companies use more elaborate and specialized scenery in their productions. Okay. Less variety, but higher quality. Yeah. They focused on more on one thing and moved around. Okay. Okay. In passing through the state, uh, discovered about 15 miles below St. Augustine, a family of white persons consists, consisting of John McDonald, his wife, and five children. Two of the children he found to be half human and half alligator. He at once mm-hmm. c- contacted the parents who gave him uh, the management of the children. Uh, so... This is great, and he agreed to pay them $25 per month uh, to care for them until such time as he saw fit to take them away. Ah. Everything's great. A few weeks ago, Mr. Lewis returned to the state for the purpose of taking the children north, and on Wednesday arrived in the city to arrange for their transportation. He will go to St. Augustine Monday uh, after the children arrive in the city uh, with them perhaps on Tuesday morning, and will remain here for about five hours before leaving to Louisville. That's a very specific amount of time. That is an awfully specific amount of time. Uh, These children are now nine years of age and have never been... uh, exceeding 10 miles from home their bodies arms and heads from the hips up are perfectly formed while from the hips down they are pres- uh the- they present the identical appearance of the alligator having I hate a it. having a perfectly formed tail of about five feet in length i suspect that part's bullshit they probably had a skin condition <laughs> the tail i imagine is not real if if extent at all maybe he like taped a tail on him or something um i wouldn't mind having a tail if it was fully prehensile. Fully prehensile. Very important. I'm with you. I'd want to be fully prehensile. I might... Ch- we would have to modify some of our chairs, but tails tails seem pretty cool. Yeah. Like, like, like I could use it as a third arm, basically. That would be cool. Yeah. Or prehensile... That would be the only... Prehensile... Huh? Prehensile penis. Um, together well, with the hind feet and legs of the alligator... <laughs> They crawl around on their hands and feet, converse intelligently, and seem to enjoy life very much. Again, this hands and feet crawling, I imagine, is a ploy he put them up to. Uh, I mean... They live part of the time in the water, which they enjoy very much, using their tails while swimming. The same as an alligator to propel their bodies. They're healthy and good-looking and well-developed children. And outside of their love for water, their general mode of living is the same as other uh, human beings. Um, I mean, because they're humans. Yeah. Yeah, because they're 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 humans. They're, That's the they're important a human part. Person, they're like an actual person that you're devolving into a sideshow gag. Yeah, and uh, right. I just want to say, oh boy, there's uh, I only selected those few articles uh, because this could be an incredibly long episode of just me reading the plethora of articles that are that identical are to this depressing. About, just about children with skin t- conditions being treated terribly and compared to animals. I thought this was a show about cryptids and now we're talking, we first talked about cryptocurrency and now we're talking about sideshow abuse, basically. Yeah, but it's... What is happening to this podcast? Yeah, but that was my point is that, like, see, someone that, like, that's where someone could go, oh, alligator man. Like, that's a real thing where someone might go, uh, instead of thinking of skin condition if they've never seen it before, be like, oh, shit, there's a thing. And then they go, oh, it talks and it has a personality as a human. Maybe I should change my perspective. That other part didn't happen, unfortunately, in these. But I think no. the first part explained some of them. 
It really did, didn't happen at all, like, in the fucking slightest. No. If Ugh. anything, they, like, became worse. If I'm going to be completely honest with you. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole part of um, someone's different from me, let's expand our worldview. It went, someone's different from me, let's make profit. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the American way, if we're going to be completely the, honest. Very literally, it's the American Yeah. It is explicitly the American way. That is that is American society in a nutshell. Oh, yeah. So, um, and very supply-side Jesus. What's supply-side Jesus? It's, uh, it's when you ignore the fact that Jesus in the bible is a very like he's basically a, a socialist oh um, yeah um like if you actually read if you actually read the thing that people cite a lot he's kind of a socialist he he he, he was i don't know if he he ever said anything about workers owning the means of production <laughs> yeah but he i think he would side with oh, his, a lot his, of socialism. his points of view yeah his 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 like his yeah his whole thing is sense kind of community of and organizing <laughs> yeah yeah having a soul <laughs> um helping the wheat helping people who are in worse positions than you you know stuff like that you know human stuff oh all these crazy radical ideas yeah yeah do you think jesus would like death metal I think he would have liked death metal. I don't know why that thought Might just have. came into my head, but I think he would have been a fan. Uh, I'm not going to say anything that's going to get me in trouble on this podcast. What? Oh, <laughs> I'll say uh, I will. I'm pretty sure I already have. I'm not going to say anything that's going to get me in trouble in regards to talking about... Uh, now, like... I feel like if I say I'm gonna say something that's going to be offensive if I try to explain why I'm not gonna say something about being offensive. <laughs> you have a catch twenty two. Yeah. See, the and nice thing about this catch twenty two is you don't actually have to make a choice. I don't. I can just stop it. You can just go I can nah. Just stop. Which is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying nah. 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 Nah, brah. <laughs> nah. Nah, brah. Oh, Jesus. So that was the episode then? Yeah, that, that was the episode. Okay. What do you think that was the episode then? We're, we're, we're an hour in. Uh, yeah, I know, but like, I... There's I no satisfying I, end. There's... Dude, I'm like, I, I'm tired. I'm probably going to go fall asleep after this um maybe watch a show you know just i'm gonna do know. some preparing for the collard greens fair enough fair enough We're well then in that case pork chops collard greens ribs macaroni and cheese uh i think that's it for today for for that's for for my, my meal planning so it's not a mystery why you're at the weight you're at right now then <laughs> which i don't mean to be shitty but oh no like, oh no it's no mystery i am also well aware of i bought did i talk about it? i bought fat pants no you didn't oh shit i bought fat pants yeah so like i don't wait were we talking about weight on the podcast or no that was, podcast? that was before the podcast oh i'm yeah. sorry i didn't mean to like rip roast you on that oh one. no 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 because it just reminded me um so i used to be the way i am now and then yeah. i started you know eating like a regular human being healthy but then covid happened and i heavily leaned into that into that as an excuse um yep, yep. that was part of the problem I... is that i was at a sustained a very uh, sustained weight for for a long enough period where i got rid of all the clothes from from when i was in like before from like basically college weight. I'm back to my college weight. Yeah. I threw all those clothes away and then COVID happened. And then I had to go and buy, I was like, man, I've got some pants that just the buttons, the buttons don't make it anymore. 
I, I also want to point out I'm not like shaming you in any way. For oh that. no, I was more no, no. I, I think was it's... more making a joke at like it sounds good. It's just I was making a joke. Oh yeah, no, I don't care. I got I just thought I, I cause I'm telling you I thought think it's funny that I had to buy fat pants. <laughs> because... Well, I think I think your experience is very relatable for COVID nineteen. Oh, I don't think it's unique. So, so uh, my story, my, my weight journey, um, 2019, November, I was like, fuck, I'm like, I was like 230 and I'm just like, oh. this is, this is too much. And I started to lose weight and I got down to sub 200. And then basically as soon as I got sub 200, COVID-19 happened. Oh yeah. And I've just been kind of in a spiral of sorts oh yeah I, I i was in 2020 brandon or no sorry 2019 brandon was a very sustainable 190 2020 brandon gets married and cuts weight down to 170 mm-hmm. 2021 brandon's back up to 220 <laughs> which I, I think is a very good big swing i'm gonna get back down to the sub 200s in the summer though oh yeah you're gonna get back down like i have full confidence that you can get back down because oh yeah honestly i could have started trying already but i i it's not often that i have a very good excuse to lean into uh (laughs) this lifestyle yeah i mean like like i said like it's also this is not me trying to fat shame anyone out there right like be you. Be the person that you are. Live the life you want to live. Be whatever life that makes you happy. <laughs> yeah, like like be happy with yourself. Be healthy, but be happy, right? Like do things that are like generally like generally yeah. try to be healthy, but yeah. like also like you can don't... do doing healthy stuff every once in a while. Yeah, don't you don't have to like live your life for the sake of, you know, body standards or like you know, being 30 pounds, um, which is probably not a good idea in general. If you're 30 pounds and you're not a child, one first, if you're a child, stop listening to this podcast. Parent, if you're he- if you're there, why are you letting a child listen to this podcast? We, The words prehensile penis have happened already in this podcast. Already. Like, don't make this podcast into a, a registered sex offender, please. Don't. <laughs> that just reminded me of the Nathan For You skit, which is very funny. A very funny skit. But, like, for real, though, like, you know, uh, I was making a joke, but, like, at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. No. I know Brandon knows that that's how I feel, but, like, yeah. just just for the general population out there, I don't want anyone to feel, like, Just live life, man. Upon. Just yeah. li- live life, do whatever makes you happy. And if you decide that you're going to try to come out of your, your COVID weight... Um, I wish you the good luck because it sucks changing, uh, after being in a full year of le- leaning into, uh, <laughs> lazy. Yeah. And like, if you don't a hard wanna, lifestyle change, if you don't want to, that's fine too. Oh, if you don't want to hit me up. Cause I'm still in the, I don't want to space. <laughs> I, that's a mood. That's the, a fucking mood. The, that is uh, an agreeable mood. Yeah, I'm also not fully coming out of the, uh, I, there's, I'm just not, I just, like, I already decided, to say, I'm just not getting haircuts anymore. Because after I stopped getting haircuts, I realized how much money I saved by not getting haircuts. Yeah, you also got, like, really expensive haircuts, I feel like. Yeah, well, I used to go to the, the, the expensive place. Yeah. But then I realized why, like, I don't want to, like... I want a place where I could just do walk-ins. So I started going to a place that's actually on my way home from work. And yeah. I would and I would just go... Because I, I I would just stop on my way home from work. It'd be like, boom, boom, 15 minutes. I'd be out. It'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. And then I started the, doing um, it myself. <laughs> and then I just kind of stopped. So what you can do is you can go for the... Uh, you can go for the classic, like, long hair... Hair, long hair is close to godliness thing like samson style and you can be a you can be a uh uh colonial times reenactor 
I could do that. I've I have been at work because people make comments of the beard on occasion. I do say it is my source of power, like Samson. I mean, it's just a fact. It is. It's just a fact. It's a prehensile beard. Now, that is not true, as far as I know. Beautiful. I've never seen you perform that feat. Beautiful hair forever. Perfect hair forever. Perfect hair forever. Perfect, Perfect beard forever. Okay-ish beard forever. That actually, that's that's more accurate. That is that is much more accurate. Nah, your beard your beard's pretty good. Your beard's it's, pretty good. It's decent. My I got, my I gotta, beard. I got I got to tighten it up. I was looking uh, pretty pretty uh, lesser housed yesterday at Shoprite. So yeah, guys, if if you're if you're like you can leave at any time, like oh yeah, this is just we, conversation. This now. is this is not this is not like we're we're a podcast. We're not the law. Like I'm not a cop. That's exactly what a cop would say. I'm not a cop. I'm not a cop. I'm not a cop. Legally, I have to say if I'm a cop. You know that. That that's also not true. <laughs> Super not true. Anyone <laughs> out there who thinks that's true, super not true. Yeah, very not super true. Super not true. Very the not true. The opposite of true. It, it, it's very opposite of true, and it's also beneficial for them to just not put out that information that it's not true. Yep. <laughs> like, why would, why would they tell you that, that it's not true? That it helps them. Yeah. Yeah. Never, 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 never. Um, all right, I'll just do plugs now because we're we're done. We're oh, everyone's done. gone already. Oh yeah, like like it's a shame that we're doing plugs after everyone's already gone. So yeah. like, um, except so you, Kyle. Web- Kyle, I know you're still listening. To be fair, like I, f- I think probably a few of the people who are on the the Discord server are probably still listening. Um, yeah, or I would name someone that wasn't on Discord because I wanted to freak someone out. Because we say their names. I wanted to freak out true. someone by using a name we've never used before. Kyle. Xander. Patricia. Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Don't uh, do crap on me. Mario. Mario. Do we have any Marios? I don't think we have any Marios in our Facebook group. Oh, I'm just naming random names oh. at this point. Uh, Slagathor. Slag what? Slagathor. Slagathor. That's one of my favorite like names. Like, is that a name? I don't know, but like, I want to believe it's a name. Slagathor sounds like like if you went into a brothel in the UK and it had a basement. <laughs> like, um, that's where you go for the ball torture. You go to Slagathor. Uh, from Slagathor. Yeah. She's actually like like she's not at all what you think she looks like, by the way. She's she's different than what you think she looks like. Like whatever you're imagining right now, different. No, no. She's whatever me. you need it to be. She's whatever you need it to be her to be. Whatever your imagination is, she's different though. That's Slagathor is a tulpa of ball torture. <laughs> <laughs> oh so i had a realization uh yeah. i'm in the middle of talking about the plugs i had a realization that uh federal government and government in general is effectively a tulpa federal government and government in general is effectively a tulpa yeah because like it's it's for all intents and purposes it's uh a thing that people collectively willed into like willed into existence it's collective. It's 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 like a a tulpa for like CEOs, maybe. <laughs> no, well, no, like government at its like original like American government, government um, American government, like is a tulpa because we all agree that it like like local government, is a thing. federal government. I would say is a tulpa, but only for like rich no, people. No. We all agree that it, it, it exists. It's like money. We all agree that it's a thing. Like, we all accept that this thing, this imaginary thing is a reality. And, yes. like, we've we've created it. It's now become a real thing as a result of that. So, like, in the in the sense of what they say, what people say tulpas are, it's a tulpa. Oh, no. 
Oh yeah. no! Oh, you're, you're back. I just heard a pop, and then you went quiet for a second. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yeah. Um. Anywho, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Email is Gmail. That that email, email is, is Gmail. Cryptopediacast at gmail.com or garfieldmail.com. Garfield Mail. Um, US at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. want to thank our jackalopes. I think it's my week. So, Clay Sinclair, thank you for being a recurring sponsor. Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and Buck Andrew Jackson. Uh, we have a Facebook group, as Brandon alluded to, and a Discord group, as I alluded to. Yep, I think we just had some new people join um, both of those. Although, yeah. oddly enough, in like one of the weeks where there's been less going on in them, but th- sometimes stuff kicks off. Sometimes, sometimes. the Yeah, the Discord had a really interesting discussion recently about cryptid tiers oh holy like, shit i just clicked lists. over to the to the cryptids channel and saw there's 50 plus messages that i have not read oh uh, i should turn on notifications for that guy uh well the it's the general we had like a really long ass conversation about uh, which cryptid would win in a fight or, like, what the ranking of cryptids were or something like that. Oh! Also, I don't know if you saw this uh, tangentially related. So we talked about it. Did you watch the video I put in there about the uh, the the Boston the Dynamics dog, dog? Not yet, not yet. John, you have to watch that demon, that robo-demon hound that we were talking about probably a couple times in some episodes, I don't recall. Someone made it find and piss beer into cups. That's awful. It is someone the world found is the terrible. only good use for for that um that demon robot. I don't know. It's still terrible at its core. Let's not let's not normalize the demon robots. No, let, let let's not. Or let's do. They can fight no, each other. Let's not normalize them. Let's not normalize anything that can give uh the government more power over us that we can't like resist or we can make their outer body electric electrocute you if you touch it i feel like that's going the opposite direction of where i uh suggested we go brandon get to zip tie tasers all over it yeah, no, that's that's a terrible idea. Maybe you should do some plugs instead of making up all these awful, 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 awful ideas that are making me sad. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. Also, you got to be careful with tasers because they're easy to mis- they're easy to mistake apparently for uh, other things. Other things that are on the opposite side of your body in different colors, anyway. <laughs> and shapes. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> and different materials. Yeah. I think you can tell what our opinion is on this podcast. <laughs> um. <laughs> My Instagram is Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is JohnDunhamGames.com. And my email is John at Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is GreaterGloryCo.com. His email is TomMikeHill at gmail.com. And I have not seen him at Hannaford or ShopRite recently. Oh, okay. Um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Things are going to get weird. Thank <laughs> you.